Hey guys, how's it going? I want to first apologize. I didn't get to do a recap video yesterday. I um, had to take off again. You know, this week has been a busy week. We moved my daughter home from college. We got to get stuff ready to go to storage. You know, last night was just a late night and get back to real late. And ended up waking up late this morning, getting my son late to school this morning. My whole morning routine was, was just shot. Um, but I will try to cover all of it here in this video. So my message will be very brief. Um, but it's, it's real important. And it is inspired by an email that I got, you know, not too long ago. And conversation that followed the email. Um, but I want you guys to understand, you are the captain of your own ship. In, in this trading deal, you may be learning from me, but I'm not the captain. I'm not driving you, your ship. You need to drive yours. You may be following along in my wake, and that's fine. But I'm not going to drive your ship for you. And you shouldn't be looking for me to drive it. You shouldn't be looking for other people to drive it. And, you know, too much of that is going on. You know, you know what direction you want to go in. You know the end result. You know what you're looking for. When I get in my boat, I know exactly what direction I'm going I'm going in. I'm driving it. Now, of course, I've got to find out where the wind is. I need the wind to drive my sails. But the direction that I'm going is my decision and, and mine alone. If I choose to drive into a storm or hurricane, then that's that's my choice. Um, but and nobody I can't blame it on anybody else but me and the same is is true in this trading game because in order for us to be successful we need to find out what direction the market is going in what trend our stock is going in because you know we're we're driving that trade but if we try to drive it and we don't have what we need behind it. It's just like me trying to go somewhere and I don't have the wind in my sail. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to sit down and watch the sail flutter. It's the same thing with you and your trade. You know, if you're not driving that ship and you think somebody else is driving it for you and you're going to sit there and go in circles. If you don't follow the market and understand what direction is going in so you can point yourself in the right direction. You're going to sit there and your sails are going to flutter. So you guys, you got to be the captain of your own ship. You got to understand what direction the market is going. If you don't, then that's when you ask and you make sure you ask somebody that you know, you know, and the situation I was telling you about, it all started in chat. When somebody sent me a PM and it was like, you know, Ed, why aren't you trading um, ESPR? You know, all these guys in chat are trading it and they're making money on it. Well, you know, great. Number one, it wasn't on my watch list. It did not make my watch list. Okay. It didn't meet the criteria of anything to be on my watch list so i'm not watching it it's great that you guys you know got a secondary play on the stock we traded yesterday happens a lot if that's your strategy and that's your style then go for it you know but don't you know send me these messages and i ignored it at first and then it came again and i had to explain look i'm not being arrogant I have my own watch list. You know, I'm the captain of my own ship. I'm not letting anybody else drive it. If I choose to to stay in my lane and do what I'm doing, then that's what I'm going to do. And you guys have to be the same way. And the same guy, you know, emailed me, come to find out he lost most of his account because... He was going the wrong way. 
He didn't know what he was doing. You know, everybody was short. He thought they were going long. So he went long and, and lost it. it. It's not my fault. You know, I'm trying to help you. You need to be the captain of your own ship. If you don't know how to drive, then you shouldn't be out there driving. That's where education comes in. You know, so make sure you guys, you know, make sure you're ready if you're going to start driving. Don't get out there and drive and then say, no, I can't do it and let somebody else do it. You're going to end up just like this guy. And I mean, I hate it, but sometimes we got to learn the, these hard lessons. All right, so let's go and take a look at, okay, this is yesterday. This is SSYS. Now, I want you to pay particularly close attention to this. Uh, remember this, you know, because we're going to talk about this when we look at our trade from today. Well, we got in. We had a nice sell-off. It, it missed my target by a few cents. And then we came all the way back up, and I ended up just stopping out. Smart move. Because look what it did. All right. It was only a couple cents away from my target. Why didn't I put my target right here? The world will never know. But this is what caused this mess up here. Um, I, didn't, I didn't let it take me red. I just closed it out. You know, because I knew it, we, we just weren't coming back. You could feel it. You can see in the momentum. You know, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have traded with this long wick here. That probably should have been the first sign that I should have stayed out. But, you know, we learn our lessons and we move on. So just keep this stock in mind. Okay, GILD, this is the one that I gave back some money on here. Um, here I got short thinking we were selling, you know, we were rolling over the next candle stopped me out. Don't ask me why I turned around and got back in. I don't even have a clue. I don't even know why I did that, but I got back in and ended up stopping out up here. So I gave back $160 on a brain dead trade. And believe me, it was brain dead. You know, this was me being brain dead. So, you know, I went to lunch and just tried to clear my head. You know, I don't know what, you know, I, I let the first trade kind of irritate me a little bit. Um, still had a little bit of that irritation in and ended up getting messed up on this. Now, Here's the ESPR. This is a stock that, you know, people were asking me about this morning. Okay, this was on my watch yesterday. This hit my scan. This is on my watch list, which is why I traded it down here. Once it, once I realized we were coming out of lunch, we were probably going to continue to sell off. This is when I kept trading it. And, you know, I traded it. Here I got stopped out back at break even. So I waited for a minute and well, about 15 minutes, I got back in and then added here and then started covering and then got back in here and then, you know, covered at the end of the day. I want you to watch, look at what happened here and then let's look at what happened today. Just remember these two stocks, the chart on SSYS. And then the chart on ESPR. You know, so made some good money on this. And and I realized after the soul searching that I I need to stop looking for these huge moves and I need to take advantage of the small moves that they're giving me. If I do that, then I can come out on top. And that's kind of what I took from yesterday in my reflection sessions. Now, if you guys missed the the um, 
webinar today, we I gave an example. I went through my trade from the day and filled out my reflection um, template. Went through everything, answered the questions, and you guys saw exactly how I look at trades and how I can figure out what I did wrong and what I can do the next time in order to solve that problem. Or how that data, once we get it all together, we're able to form a picture. We can plot data points. We can find, plot a picture as to what's happening with our trades over, say, the next, the last two weeks or the last month, and then make some adjustments, some minor adjustments. Not changing our strategy, we just make some minor adjustments. And so here, you know, I was looking for moves, at least a 30 cent move, 30, 40 cents. I wasn't looking for these 10 or 15 cent, 20 cent scalp moves. They had to be bigger than that. But you can see um, 351 on, you know, just working this out. So this helped us with our day yesterday. Ended yesterday, 122.32. Uh, felt pretty good about it. Um, just wish this would have sold off into the close. Um, that really would have been the best thing. But remember, I want you to keep remember that that chart. All right, so Tesla, this was my earnings trade. And, you know, I don't like calling these out in the main chat. I try to relegate these to the swing trade room because you can't take trades like this in the small account. You can't allow trades like this to really go against you if you don't have the capital to back you up. And, you know, this... I knew what was going to happen on earnings. Well, I didn't know 100% for sure, but based on my experiences and the things I've seen and how this thing trades, I pretty much knew what was going to happen when earnings got released. I knew we were going to sell off at some point. I knew we were going to get a pop-up. Um, I didn't realize it was going to take this long, which... Thankfully, we were we were having a class or else this would have drove me crazy, but it worked out and it did exactly what I was looking for it to do. I left about two or three points on the table. No, but it hit my target, so I had to take it off. Um, so we picked up 1924.73. Now, unfortunately, that morning, I was getting in my... Um, all day hold set up and I didn't want the same thing to happen to me today that hap what happened to me yesterday that happened to me Tuesday so I just went ahead and got in you know we went red I felt we were going to stay below the red the green line going into the open I didn't pay any attention to the trend or anything okay I gave up control of this trade because I didn't pay attention and I wasn't looking at what was going on. I was doing this on my phone. You know, I had my little laptop, but I couldn't really see anything. So I got in and this thing ended up nailing me. You know, but good. So I lost um, 500 bucks on this deal. Like 493 something on this <coughs> all day hold. <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me I thought <coughs> no I thought we were selling off into earnings um obviously we weren't and it waited until after earnings came for it to sell off but you know all in all it kind of taught me uh a little bit better lesson to not do this but that was tesla yesterday um i don't have i don't know what happened to the slide that i made for this but um i know i, I lost 493 dollars and some change on this stock <clears throat>
All right, so this is Tesla today. All right, so th this is, you know, what I, what I traded yesterday after the close. So this morning, you know, we were trending down pretty nice. So I went ahead and got in. I didn't try to get in at seven or anything like that. So I got in here and I was looking for the sell off. I hit my first target here at 276. And uh, 277. Yeah, 277. And the next one was 269 something or 270 is what I um, rounded it up to. So we hit the first target pretty good and we came back up. I had my stop order set, but except for 150 shares, I had it set for 75. And luckily I came back and checked this and realized I still had 75 shares on, so I had to close it out. But that cost me a, a little bit of money, but only 523 the day. It just didn't fall, it didn't follow through and sell off like I wanted it to, so um, no big deal on it. I'm pretty much done with Tesla for now. I'll probably be looking for a fresh stop tomorrow if I can find one. If not, I won't trade it. You know, this <clears throat> all day hold strategy, you know, some days you'll find something to set up, some days you won't. It's You just have to be there to take advantage of it um, when it happens. So today, uh, KKR was on my watch list. It was one that gapped up <clears throat> that looked like, you know, we were coming back. We're showing some weakness pre-market. So, you know, I was looking to short this. And it has some nice windows. This was a $22 stock. Um, so I felt real comfortable with it. Take 300 shares and we should be able to make this work. So... Here we go. Um, at the open, we stayed weak. We stayed below the VWAP. We couldn't push it. Um, let that candle close. We got the five minute opening range low. This candle opened. We tried to push up. It fell. We closed below it. So I waited for this candle to open, make a new low relative to this candle. I got in. That's the entry. You know, I can't be any more perfect or any more precise with this entry um, because it's just not worth me anticipating this anymore. So I get in. We get a nice run down. My target is 100, the 100 period moving average right here, which is a couple of cents below this, this level, which happens to line up with the pre-market low. So if you look at, <clears throat> remember the chart on S, what was that? SS, um, SSYS, remember how the candle when I was in, we ran all the way down and came within a couple cents and bounced back. Well, this actually got <clears throat> a little over 50 cents, almost 60 cents away from my entry and this is what I've been seeing not just yesterday not just today but for the last couple of weeks that it's coming down it's coming close and it's messing me up so this morning I was ag I was aggravated I was agitated because lack of sleep waking up late fussing you know, whatever. And when it bounced up on me, I just went ahead and took the whole thing off. And just was like, look, I'm, I'm done with this. And got a little bit out of sorts. But, in, and we were looking at this trade in our webinar today. And as, as I went through my re reflection, you know, I realized this is one of the adaptations that we're going to need to make. That I need, just because this is, you know, that I feel that the 100 day or the 100 period moving average is going to trump all of this. I need to put my stop 
I need to put my profit target right on this level. If we're coming down and I have a pre-market low and it lines up almost to the penny with the daily pivot and a couple cents from the 100 day, I need to put my order back here. Either I need to take it all off or I can take half off and then let it work. I saw what was happening here. We sat here for about a minute and a half, two minutes <clears throat> at 22.36, We just sat there and I just kept thinking in my head, you need to cover some here and just put it back at break even, put the rest, stop on the rest back at the break even point and just let this thing work. <clears throat> but by the time I decided it, the stock was coming back. It was too late. So I sat there and I took too long thinking, number one. And I was just really frustrated with myself. So I just had to, <clears throat> again, then <laughs> walk out and regroup. Because it was, it was just, you know, it, I, I can't even explain the feeling that I had. And you can see, had I done what I was supposed to do, take half off here, let the rest be, you know, my stop be the rest back here, break even, I would have gotten the move. Now, we didn't get to my final target, which was the 100, I mean the 200 right here, but I would have been able to cover again and make a little bit more money. So this one, you know, you look at this one, you look at SSYS. These are the stocks that I could clean up and with the same share size, make some decent money. And, you know, that's where my focus is going to be um, going forward. Now, 97, you know, on this one, not bad. But doing the numbers, I could have had about 160 bucks on this trade. You know, had I done what I was supposed to do. But that's just the way it is. Um, I learned what I needed to learn. We saw, you know, what improvements I need to make. And we got a plan in place to do it. And that's what reflection is all about. That's the single most strategy or tool that can shorten your learning curve. It can shorten your learning curve tremendously. If you just take the time and you have the discipline to do it right and to do it every night you will see tremendous progress in your trade. If I can't promise you anything else, and I can't, I can promise you that you will see improvement in your trading, in yourself, if you re do your reflection and you do it the right way. No shortcuts. All right, so the next trade was on CAH. This was on our watch list too. Um, you can see this is my ideal, you know, my ideal trade here. Gap down below 52-week low. Uh, we got the 52-week low as our backdrop. And let's get in and short this thing. Well, I didn't. It didn't set up as soon as my um, K, the other stock I traded, the KKR. So... I kind of missed this at the open. You see what it did at the open. It actually got bought back up. We sold off and we rejected up here. Once we rejected, we put in a lower low. This was where I jumped on it. And I got it. Got my three covers. Or two covers here. I was holding it because I was looking for this thing to continue to watch. But we didn't. So I hit my profit stop here. And real solid trade. Got back in here on this rejection. Got my first cover. And this, you know, kind of flattened out. So I took it off. We're going into lunch. You know, let's wait until after lunch. And see what we could do coming out of lunch. So we did get bought up during lunch. Ran up. 
And so we started coming back. Um, got in on the first candle that confirmed under the 20 and the 9. Um, made a real nice move down. But then I started to see some serious momentum shift. And I took it all off. And I don't regret that. Because there's no, there's no way of knowing whether this was going to turn around and go back up. This was a strong reversal here. Even though it only lasted two candles, it was pretty wicked. So I stopped out, and when it showed that we were coming back, I got back in here and, you know, just worked these out. Now, <clears throat> remember the um, ESPR trade, how at 3.30 things just turned around and went up? Here, I get out, and it's about 340, and this thing sells off almost another point after I got out. And I'm like, man, this is what I look for, these late-day fades, where I could get in to set my profit targets and just make money while I'm driving. While I'm picking my son up from school, and that's just what this was doing. It, it hit every target. And, you know, but I got back in chat before this target hit. And, and I was just saying, as soon as I said it, I was like, I ought to pull this order and just see how low it can go. It just jumps down and hits my order. I didn't even get a chance to pull it. But <clears throat> all in all, excellent trade. Um, $433 on this. And all together, minus commissions and fees, a solid, solid day. This is that. This is the best day that I've had in this small account. And I was expecting one or two days like this a week after earnings season started. I honestly and truly was expecting these, you know. But you got to take what the market can give you. If it's going to start giving it to me now, then we're going to start growing our account, you know, by leaps and bounds here. So now we're up to, I think, around 2500 I'll look at it tomorrow and see. But I think we're, we're up to about 2500 now, maybe twenty six, And that's a remarkable comeback from the first three weeks. They were disastrous. You know, I was just trying to do do the wrong thing. And, you know, that happens. But you see, we got this shit right. It. You saw exactly what I did, what I talked about, the changes that I made, just like the ones I shared with you today. We're going to look at making those changes. We're going to see if we can be a little bit more profitable and, and keep building on this. So really, really pleased with today. And, you know, guys, I'm trading in SureTrader every day, live. And you guys see me trade in the morning when it's the most volatile. And I don't have any trouble getting in and out of trades. No trouble whatsoever. Um... You know, and I and like I said, it's all it goes back to what I believe. It's all about the stocks you trade. If you trade that low dollar, low float garbage, you're gonna run into problems with it. I mean, I did when I was trying to trade it, that was the only time I ran into problems with short trading. When I was trying to trade those penny stocks and those, you know, real low dollar, low float. Even listed stocks. You know, but now trading these stocks, I have no problem. None. In the last 40 days, the only issue has been one day when our boss didn't update the buying power. 
So I don't know if it's your trader's fault. I don't know if they own eyeballs or if it's a separate clearing company. Whatever the case is, you know, that's the only issue that I've had. And that's that's just once. So knock on wood or computer or whatever that this continues. But I'm just not seeing the same the problems that a lot of people are talking about. You know, trading the stocks that I'm trading. All right, guys. That's going to do it for me tonight. I um, hope you guys have a great night. A great evening. We can get ready to make some money on Friday. So we can enjoy the weekend. So you guys take care. And I'll see you in the morning.